I have the great pleasure of bringing back onto the stage, Annie, hey. Hi, hi, uh, thanks for your patience. <laughs> this is a true so, testament of dedication and determination and how it pays off and ain't no permissions gonna hold us back today. No, no. No, um, uh, uh. Do you see my screen? I do. I'm going to bring it on to the stage and I'm going to let you have 10 minutes and I will uh, come and see you in 10 minutes. See you. Cool. Sounds good. Yeah. And I will, I'll try and make this like a lightning, lightning talk. So um, yeah. Hi everyone. I'm Annie. Thanks for your patience and getting me up here. And thank you to Demetrios um, and the ML Ops community team for creating this event in this space. It's been so awesome and even just like the past two talks were super relevant to um what i'm doing uh i'm technically a data scientist but i'm not really sure if i'm a data scientist anymore i'm kind of having an identity crisis um with this crazy world of ai um but yeah i've worked at really large enterprises i've worked for startups and i'm currently working on building recommendation systems at private equity at a private equity company. And um, so I guess I'm kind of like a practical application of of trying to figure out some of the questions from the last two talks or last three talks that were just up here. Um, so, yeah, I'm speaking to you from the perspective of someone who like two years ago, I was just a meager data scientist um, training and deploying regression and tree based models. And uh, I'm like that person who is always running to try and catch the train. And I always feel like I'm late. And that's really been my experience with LLMs. Um, but, you know, we all have to adapt. And um, so I've been adapting by signing up for 15 Udemy courses on um, generative AI and then never taking them. <laughs> and then trying to build an LLM app in, in a weekend on a time crunch. Um, so yeah, I, I'm gonna take some of my own advice and I'm gonna think from the end of this presentation, which is now in like less than 10 minutes from now. And uh, I hope that at the end of this, not only do you feel like a winner, but you have some key questions to think about um, when deploying LLMs in production, whether that's on your own, if you've never done it before, or if your company or organization is um, looking to deploy LLMs in production. Um, and I hope that you kind of feel a sense of empowerment that you can get production experience with LLMs, um, if I did. <laughs> so um, as humans, like, we're not really built to think from the end. And that's what makes like product managers jobs so hard. Right. Um, so uh, I'm going to try and do that with an example that's kind of loosely based on my experience right now of preparing to deploy LLMs. Um, so maybe a business leader says, I want a, I want a user to find a match within the first five recommendations that they see in the application. Um, in my case, a lot of our users can be boomers. So people who might not have grown up in the tech age, they're not used to using applications. So we have like a really quick minute for them to either enjoy their experience or not enjoy their experience. Um, and let's assume that these recommendations in our app um, are developed using LLMs. So already with this business need, we're thinking about the user's experience, how good the recommendations are, um, what data a new user would need to input to receive a good recommendation, and how quickly the app can produce a recommendation based on data or even new data. So. Um, in the data science life cycle, which is something that I'm most accustomed to and kind of like what I grew up on, um, it can be somewhat linear. And th with the end goal, you know, being like get good model performance and, you know, go back and get quality data, engineer better features. Um, and so this thinking can be somewhat linearly. And um, like even where I currently work, um, we're not even at a stage where we're able to, you know, fine tune LLMs or or even use RAG. We're just using inference. Um, but we have naturally leaned on LLMs for nearly every step of the data science lifecycle because 
it's just so convenient and so useful. Um, we mostly have unprocessed text data as our inputs, and we don't currently have labels. So um, using LLMs, it's like a given that, that we're gonna use it in our data science lifecycle. Um, LLMs have proven to be useful for um, cleaning up um, text data that's scraped from the internet, uh, engineering features, and creating similarity searches. So, um, you know, getting there and um, getting some recommendations is just one part of this, this business need that we have. Um, but once we have those good recommendations and we've sort of been through that data science life cycle, um, if we go back to that business need, that only covers just a small portion of that business need, which is getting good recommendations. Um, so some of the other questions that we need to ask if we're gonna have LLMs anywhere in the life cycle of our product. Um, so like, as an example, we use OpenAI API as part of our data cleaning process. Um, there are rate limits on the API and it's costly. So how long will it take to process data for users at once? Um, doing things like tokenization and text embeddings, that's different from the realm of like traditional data science pre-processing that I've done in, in production. So like, what is the compute on something like that? Um, what's the compute on running pre-trained LLMs like BERT? Um, going back to like the evaluation piece, like how do we evaluate this and collect the right data points to see if the predictions that our LLMs are making or the similarity searches that they're doing are um, what we want the user to experience. And then also like if the similarity search or like the LLM is utilizing like a description, for example, of a business or of a person who's using the application, um, how do we collect like quality data from the user so that we know that it's gonna produce a good recommendation? Um, you know, we can't have a user come in and just give us a one sentence description and hope that um, that will be quality enough to have them have a good experience. So like how much do we guide that? And uh, I've watched um, data scientists' eyes glaze over when they suddenly realize um, that the cool results that they produced using an LLM um, be reproduced auto like and automated um, in the world of the app. So um, I'll just skip ahead here because, um, you know, like, I think ultimately I, I really wanted to give an example of how you could like simple, um, quick and dirty deploy an LLM, which is kind of like what I'm trying to do right now. But I realized that like, in some ways it's like not, it's not simple. And so like where I'm at is I'm working on deploying our models in AWS cloud, um, no particular tie to AWS, it's just the cloud service that we use. Um, so that I can kind of test the limits of all these questions that I'm asking. And uh, and so just as like, if you, whether you're on your own right now trying to figure out how to deploy LLMs or you work for a company that's interested in deploying LLMs, um, the cool thing is that a lot of the cloud services, especially AWS, offer a lot of integrations with LLMs. So you could um, create an AWS account if you don't already have one and use um, the SageMaker integrations with Hugging Face to deploy your LLMs. That means like you don't even have to download the model artifacts to deploy an LLM. Um, also, AWS Bedrock allows you to invoke a, an LLM on the Bedrock runtime. And just yesterday, Deep Learning AI released a free course on um, creating serverless LLM apps with Bedrock. So again, like this is something where like you don't need to like get a job to um, then get the experience that you need to deploy LLMs. You can like go out and play with some of this stuff yourself, um, even if it seems a little bit scary um, or you haven't really explored this world yet. Um, so yeah, and even if you just tried this, you would be at where I'm at right now. So um, I guess in conclusion, like, um, uh, you know, this is kind of like deciding to have kids. There's never a right time where you'll be ready to start deploying LLMs. So um, go play with it. And uh, yeah.
Thank you. <laughs> ah, I love this quote at the end. This is so awesome. And I was trying to tweet what you were saying. Like, I wanted to give a quick and dirty way of deploying LLMs, except I realized there's not really a quick and dirty way of doing this. It's amazing. <laughs> yes. Even if the marketing teams want you to think that there is, that's the problem with it, I think, huh? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Yeah. If you ask any marketing team right now, they will tell you that it's easy as, you know, it's like that, that classic meme where half the horse is drawn with stick figures and then the other half is drawn. Uh, with yeah, exactly. Really exactly. detailed in depth. And so it's like how to draw a horse and draw that. So Annie, awesome. Thank you so much for persisting and giving us this talk. It was awesome. I really appreciate you coming on here. Thank you.